So hello everyone, I am Julie. I'm here with the Virginia Tech Science Festival and I will be your host today. We are here with Elena from Our Viruses Dead or Alive and she will be with Ms. Thomas's seventh grade science students. So take it away, Elena. Hi everyone. Do you, what do you guys think? Are viruses dead or are they alive? Alive, okay, you guys think they're alive, okay. So uh, these are just some of the things you need to be er, alive. So now we're gonna ask, okay, well, what is a virus? Yeah, viruses make us sick or they can make plants sick or an other animals sick. Um, but yeah, when you look at this virus, do you know what it's made of? So here is what a virus is made of. It has three main parts. The spike, and this is that pretty thing on the outside and it helps the virus attach to cells. It has a capsid or a protein coat, which is this blue part that kind of are here in gray on the other uh, picture. And then it has genetic material like DNA, like us, or RNA, like the coronavirus or the flu. So if we look at what you need to be alive, it doesn't really have, doesn't really need water or use water. It doesn't really breathe um, or use energy. It doesn't really have a membrane, but it has a shell. It does have genetic material and it reproduces, but it needs something to reproduce. So would you guys say that a virus, a particle is alive or dead? So we're thinking alive now. You're thinking alive. Oh, you're still thinking, okay, you're thinking alive even though it doesn't really use energy or breathe or, okay. Okay, actually we're going back on dead now, but then we have a question about if it is, um, if a dead virus would still affect you. We'll get to what it means to destroy a virus, which can make it not infect you. But a virus on its own, if its pieces are all together, it will infect you, even though it's not breathing when it's outside of you or using energy. Right now, this virus seems like it's dead. It's not really doing much. It can't move. It can't breathe. Um, but we might think it's alive when we think about how it reproduces. So how do you guys... So a virus, it, because it doesn't have any of the things it needs to make new copies of itself, it needs a cell to do this. So it replicates. It doesn't reproduce in the same way we think of like animals or plants reproducing, but it, it can make copies of itself, sort of like how a photocopier, if you uh, feed it a piece of paper, it makes new copies of that paper. A virus is sort of like that piece of paper and it uses a cell to make new copies of its virus. So we have our nucleus with DNA and we have um, the endoplasmic reticulum and some ribosomes and so some other parts of the cell. So here we have our animal cell and this is not all the parts in the animal cell but here's just some. So for a virus to reproduce it needs this cell and viruses because they don't move and they can't you know swim or walk or anything they kind of just float around and by chance come into contact with an, a cell. And here's that spike protein that's binding to the cell membrane. So the cell, it doesn't know what this virus, it doesn't know that what's touching it is a virus and it just takes it into its cell. And once it's inside, once the virus is inside the cell, it releases its genetic material, which is here in orange, and then that genetic material starts to get copied by a different part called a polymerase. And it makes lots of copies of itself, like that photocopier. And this genetic material then reads into the ribosomes to make different parts of the virus. So here's that capsid, here's some more spikes. And we start to get new baby viruses inside the cell. And eventually we get a lot of new virus particles in the cell. And soon there's so many that they burst through the cell membrane and they go out and they can now infect new cells. So going back to our question, are viruses dead or alive? When they're infecting a cell, do you think a virus is dead or alive? Yes, we, we think they're alive. Cool, 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 me too, I, I think so too. Um, but as you can see, 
you know, a virus isn't always alive and it's not always uh, dead or we, we think of it different ways. So can you kill a virus? And uh, if so, how? Um, so because a virus acts differently when it's outside the cell than inside your cells, there are different ways to kill the different virus uh, states. One way you can do this is to destroy that blue capsid or the spikes. And when we wash our hands with soap or spray Lysol or something, we destroy that uh, blue capsid, the, the shell of the virus. Um, so that's one way to destroy a virus. And another way to destroy a virus when it's outside of a cell is to damage its genetic material or its RNA or DNA, the inside. And we can do this with UV light. As we know, UV light damages our cells. It can also damage the DNA or RNA of a virus. Um, so that's how you kill a virus particle. And now you guys have, I, when we want to kill a virus that's infecting our cells, we use different things. Um, and one of these is to use a vaccine. Um, vaccines are a different version of the virus, either it's a weaker version of the virus or something that looks like the virus. So then our immune system learns how to destroy the virus before it can make us sick. And then another way is to use medications or antiviral medications that destroy the virus from, um, from making new copies of itself inside the cell at different parts. Uh, can you get too many vaccines or can you have too many vaccines? So vaccines sort of mimic a virus or are a weaker version of a virus and your body starts to fight that weakened version so it can recognize it. So if you get a lot of vaccines at once and your body's fighting a lot of things at the same time, uh, that could be harmful, but not necessarily. But um, as long as you get the vaccines spaced out, you can there shouldn't be too many vaccines. Then how come, so we understand how vaccines work because you just kind of told us about that. But like how come things like Tamiflu you can only take within a certain period of time before we get the flu and not like any time when you have the flu. So why do only some medicines work sometimes? When a virus infects you, it, some different ones, and I'm, I can't speak to the specifics of Tamiflu, but in general, um, some viruses go into an incubation period. And so they'll, be at really low levels in your body, and they're not necessarily making a bunch of new particles yet. They're just uh, slowly starting to infect things. And so if you can catch your body in that initial early part of the infection, it's easier for a medicine to get in and, and stop the virus from continuing to infect your body. So if you go too late to use a certain medication, it might not be strong enough to get rid of the virus um, later. Um, so we just had a question of what causes symptoms from a virus? Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, depends on where the virus is infecting you. There are a lot of the ones we know about are affecting our respiratory system or our lungs. Um, other viruses can infect uh, your liver or other parts of your body. Um, so they have different effects when they're making a different part of your body sick. Um, but and that one uh, or an example of what happens though is the, the immune system wants to fight this virus and the immune system is very powerful. And sometimes when it's fighting the virus, it can make you swell because all of this uh, mess and energy of the immune system is going to the infection and it can uh, you know make you swollen or make you puffy um, depending on what type of response you're having so uh, yeah it's twofold the virus is making you sick by hurting the cells and then your immune system fighting that infection can also make you feel sick <laughs>